Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I have been building fish farms for over 10 years. In the previous video, I told you about how to choose the right fish holding tank depending on the type of fish and its weight, how to choose the optimum tank material, and also mentioned the tank's color issue. And today we are going to talk about the shape of the tanks, water supply and drainage system, water volume, and tanks installation options. Well, and also about fish handling devices, which is basically something that a lot of people neglect. Watch this video to the end, because after watching it, you will be able to choose the proper tank shape and dimensions, drainage and water supply for your farm in particular. So, let's go! The first thing we are going to discuss is the shape of the tanks. I'll be honest, there is a constant and ongoing debate. Some say it's right to install round tanks. Others argue that rectangular ones are the most convenient and appropriate. The third suggests to compromise and opt for a square with rounded corners options. And this debate has always been going on. It has become eternal and without any logical conclusion. I think that there will be no outcome of this debate, because each form of the tanks has its own downfall pros and cons. Let's consider all the options, starting with the most common one, and these are round tanks. Why are round tanks so widely used? I will say, because they have very serious advantages. The first is that they are self-cleaning. When you install a round tank, you feed water into that tank tangentially, and you get a circular water movement inside the tank. All the impurities, suspended solids that the fish excretes during its life cycle are drawn to the center of the tank and removed through the central bottom drain. In this way, you get perfect self-cleaning, avoiding any manual labor. Well, and the second significant advantage of round tanks is the simplicity and cheapness of their production and installation. Why am I talking about that? Because if the tank is round, it's a self-supporting structure. You weld the tank, fill it with water. Water pressures evenly on all the walls, because the tank is round and you have it holding all the load due to water pressure inside. Therefore, the tanks doesn't need any additional external metal frames or external support to make this tank stand firmly and hold the load. What are the drawbacks of round tanks? If they didn't exist, everyone would use only round ones. But there are some, of course. The most important one is probably the inefficient use of space. When you install rectangular tanks as close to each other as only possible, you get almost 100% coverage of your area with water volume. Let's call that so. So, if you install round tanks very close to each other, of course, certain space will be left between them and it will be not filled with water. Thus, having the same area, you can get a smaller volume of water, probably by 10-15% than when using rectangular tanks. Therefore, to build a farm of the same capacity, you will need 10-20% more area if you install round tanks. And the second option is rectangular tanks. That is a type of an elongated tank of a certain length and width. You put fish into it and grow it. What are the advantages of this type of tanks? Certainly, efficient use of area. Well, that's probably the only advantage, because its disadvantage is poor self-cleaning. And this is the most significant drawback of all rectangular tanks. This is the first point. And the second point, if such a tank is not made of concrete, but of plastic, then it will necessarily require an external metal frame, because plastic without reinforcing reps will not hold the load, which will be distributed on the walls and they will gradually deform. There is a compromise option, which is a square tank with rounded corners. What kind of compromise can be reached this way? On the one hand, it contributes to the efficient use of area, actually like a rectangular tank, because it's square. On the other hand, it is wonderful self-cleaning parameters like a round tank, because it has rounded corners and equal walls length. But the downside is that due to the fact that this tank is made of plastic, there is still the need of an external metal frame. Therefore, if you compare the three standard tanks types, round, rectangular and square with rounded corners, I would definitely not recommend it a rectangular one. Unless, of course, you have an open-air trout farm operating according to the Danish technology. I would recommend to install either round tanks or rectangular ones with rounded corners. The only downside of the rectangular tanks is that they are more costly, which means that it guarantees a more efficient use of space by around 10% than a round one. 
By the way, let me tell you a very important trick. At African catfish farms tanks, self-cleaning is not necessary at all. So keep in mind that a rectangular tank is absolutely suitable when farming these fish species. If you want to use these type of tanks, use them, because African catfish absolutely doesn't care. At such farms, efficient tanks cleaning will be not due to the tank shape, but due to the fact that there will be an enormous volume of fish inside the tank that will prevent suspended matter from settling to the bottom. Let's talk about how to properly supply water to the fish holding tanks. There is a number of options here. The first one is probably the simplest, as very often it used to be done in the Soviet Union. Let's call it flute supply. A straight pipe is made. Holes are drilled in this pipe. Water is fed to it. A tap is provided for, and thus you supply water into the tanks. Thus, you have lots of holes in a long pipe, where water comes out in jets, falls, mixing with the water in the tanks. This way, first of all, excessive gases, like nitrogen, are removed. And secondly, water gets saturated with oxygen if it was under-saturated, and the oxygen level was under 100%. This option was widely used in my country in the Soviet times, when there was no liquefied oxygen, and there were rust systems at all. They simply supplied water from open water bodies to the tanks, and that was it. This water had to be somehow degassed and saturated with oxygen, which in principle worked quite effectively. But now I don't recommend using this technology if you have a rust farm with pure oxygen saturation system. Why not? That is, first of all, you won't get good water circulation inside the tanks, because you won't have the water swelling. It will only be swelling on the surface. And in the middle layers water will stagnate, which is not good for hydraulics, as suspended solids will be sedimented. Secondly, the oxygen that you supply to the water, for example, by means of oxygenator, when water falls in jets to the fish holding tanks, will just be blown off into the atmosphere. So it turns out that you have fed pure oxygen first, and then blown it off. Incidentally, I've seen variations when flutes like this were installed at rest farms when using pure oxygen, but apparently they were just, so to say, copied from the old, outdated fish farms without any understanding of how it actually works. So, they were pumping oxygen into the water and then dumping it out immediately, which in general is not optimal as you can see by yourself. The second option – water supply. This is simply feeding water through a standard pipe to the water surface of the tank. This is often done at many farms. In principle, it works. Even oxygen, given that water flow is not broken into small jets, is not blown into the atmosphere. The water is normally fed to the tank. But still there is no decent water circulation inside the tank, so you can't count on quality water treatment, I'll tell you honestly. The third option is, let's say, an advanced one, is when you bring the pipe inside the tank, submerge it almost completely. Water is coming out horizontally, swelling a certain layer of water inside the tank and creating some kind of self-cleaning, self-treatment. Generally, it's a simple option, and it's not bad at all. But still, the hydraulics inside the tank turns out not to be the best. Such a system can be used. You provide for a vertical pipe, pipe manifold, and you already get rather good hydraulics in the tanks. Why wouldn't I recommend it in 100% of cases? Because there is another technology, which is in my opinion the best and the most advanced. The one I certainly make use of myself. These are flutes. What is that and what does it look like? It's not the same flute that was used at the old Soviet times fish farms but a modified version of them. The pipe is lowered vertically through the entire water column of the tank. Special holes are drilled in this pipe. A T is provided for and a horizontal pipe is connected, but no longer above water, but under water surface. Thus, by feeding water to the tank, you supply it to the whole water column evenly and qualitatively. The horizontal pipe operates on the surface, and the vertical pipe supplies water to all layers of water. And this is where you get the highest recirculation speed and the highest quality natural water treatment. So, as far as water supply is concerned, all the options are good enough, but the best, in my opinion, is this type of flute. Honestly, I opted for this option a long time ago, and I learned about it from the Americans. Now let's talk about water drainage. Is there really any nuance to it? Frankly, there are. Not only do you need to feed the water to the fish holding tanks properly, but you also need to discharge this water. Why? Because fish excretes fecal matter and emits all types of suspended solids, also firm forms on the water surface. All these needs to be removed somehow. So what is usually done? First of all, let's consider suspended matter. It's always discharged through the bottom drain. 
You provide for a bottom drain or any central drain, a means of a lateral pipe. It's also used, although it's less convenient. The water swirling inside to the tanks draws all the dirt to the center, and it's removed from the tank through the bottom drain. But by discharging all the suspended matter from the bottom, we have not solved the problem of dirt which is still present on the surface. It could be a grease film, it can be some kind of foam, and it also needs to be removed. So in this case, a special side skimmer is placed on the side of the tank. What does it look like? At worst, it's just a lateral pipe, although honestly, it doesn't work well. At best, it's actually a special box that's welded to the tank in a vertical mesh, which the fish can't go through. And all the water from the surface is removed through this side box, which is a standpipe inside. That way you can remove all the impurities that can be settled to the tank bottom, as well as the dirt from the surface, which is lighter than water. Thus, you finally get clean water in the tanks. Some of you will probably ask, how can I discharge water from the bottom of the tank a fish can also get to the bottom as well as get into rest drainage pipes. Well, very simple. You need to provide for a special retention screen at the inlet to the drainage pipes that will allow dirt, food residues be discharged, but will not let fish penetrate through. What options are available? The first one is a bottom drain. It's just a mesh that covers the inlet to the drainage pipe. Accordingly, the food residues, all fish feces, pass through it. Is it a good option? Not bad at all, but not the best, especially if you are farming fry. Because if you grow fry, you should realize that it's very small in size. If you place such a mesh in shallow tank, it will very quickly get clogged with mud and the suspended solids in general. So if you are growing fry, you usually put this type of a vertical cylindrical lantern, which is covered with fine mesh or something else, depending on the size of the fry and you get a large surface area through which impurities are discharged, but no fry will get through. And of course, this lantern is folded less than the bottom drain, which has a much smaller surface area. Of course, there are also other water discharging devices, such as a double bottom outlet, once developed by the Norwegians, which collects suspended solids, is connected to a pipeline, and relatively cleaned water then follows into another pipeline. So, it separates the water streams. This is an efficient technology, but it requires a detailed design. That is, it's extremely difficult to be made by yourself. That's why I won't dwell on that. But if you are interested, be sure to write me. I'll send you the information on what it is and what it looks like. And who knows other cool effective tanks, water supply and drainage systems? Also, be sure to write in the comments and we'll discuss in detail. You might think that we are through with the issue of water discharge. However, it's not really that. Because in addition to water discharge, you also need to maintain a certain amount of water inside the tanks. Imagine this. You've provided for a bottom drain and then moved it directly to the water treatment units. And who guarantees that you won't have water discharge out of the tanks faster than the tanks will be filled with makeup water? And it's most probable. You will have an uneven inflow and outflow. How could this problem be solved? It's very easy. You install some kind of a so-called hydraulic lock or locking valve. What is a hydraulic lock? It's a device that keeps a certain level of water inside the tank and prevents it from emptying. That is, even you completely disconnect the tank from water supply, such a locking valve will maintain water level. Your tanks can be filled with water up to the edge for a day or two, even a week without any taps or valves being shut off. What is this lock? It's a pipe cross, inside which a special element is welded, that allows you to put an inner pipe into this cross. Another pipe is placed on the outside. In this way, water passing through the pipe cross must first rise between the inner and the outer pipe, and only then flow over the top into the inner pipe. And thus, hydraulic lock maintains water level. That is, the top edge of the inner pipe allows you to keep a constant static level. And if you change, for example, the length of the pipe, and some hydraulic locks allow you to lower the inner pipe, you automatically change the water level inside the pool. Does it seem to you convenient? Up to me, it's definitely so. Installing a pipe inside another pipe can be a little tricky. 
it has to be sorted out, it has to be done, and so on. So, often a simpler option is just the basic one. That is, you have a pipe coming up from under the tank, rising along the walls of the tank, a T is placed, and water is overflown to follow further to the water treatment units. Basically, it's the same as a hydraulic lock. It's made elementary, quickly and easily. Doesn't require any special knowledge. You can even make it yourself. So, we have sorted out water supply to the tanks and water discharge from the tanks. Let's now talk about fish holding tanks installation options. Well, let's imagine you want to install a tank with a bottom drain. A bottom drain? What is that? It's a bottom plug that's installed below the bottom of the tank. How could you put it in place? It's going to get in the way if you want to install the tanks on the flat floor. And this might be a problem. How could it get solved? In general, it could be solved in two ways. Either you install the tanks on the bottoms, so that the bottom plug is also above the ground level, so that it doesn't get in the way when you install the tanks. The drainage pipe is connected to this bottom plug. Then the pipe is laid under the tank, respectively inside the podium, and it doesn't cause any inconvenience. Convenience. It's a good option. There is also the modification of this option. This is a single podium. Very often we use such a podium in the existing buildings. So we put a single molded podium, which is easy to walk on, easy to access for servicing and maintenance. It's about 70 cm high, sometimes up to 1 meter. So any pipelines can be easily serviced. This is single podium is even more convenient than providing for separate podiums for each tank, and then thinking about some special passages in order to serve the tanks. So a catwalk is also a good option if there is a finished floor and there is no option to bury the tanks below the floor level. Well, and if you are constructing a building from scratch, the pipes can be buried below ground level. How? There are two main options. The first one is to basically install the tanks, lay pipelines, then fill it all with concrete. There's actually in case in the pipes. In general, it's a good option. You walk around, you don't see any pipes. Everything is cool, but there is a nuance. This nuance is that if some leakage occurs, or it doesn't designed right, or installed incorrectly, in order to correct this mistake and drain the pipes, solve any problem, seems to be practically unrealistic. You just have to chisel the concrete. So I'll be frank. I don't often recommend this method, although many advocate for that. I would rather lay thicker, more expensive pipes that would make the system more complicated and more expensive, but which would not lay to cause so many problems with servicing and maintenance. So far, I prefer the second option. It's laying pipes in the trays. Let's imagine that you are designing a new building and you can easily make special niches and trays in the floor for both bottom plugs and utility pipelines. And they will collect water from the floor, because this type of production is connected with water that constantly drops to the floor. It still needs to be discharged somewhere and somehow. That's why the pipes are laid inside the trays. I personally prefer this option. We simply cover these trays with grids. You can walk on, it's comfortable. Nothing gets underfoot. And at the same time, you can always open the tray and solve any problem if it occurs. Naturally, providing for trays is a little expensive at the initial stage of the farm construction, but it's easier to maintain later. Well, I highly recommend, when planning your fish farm, to think about how you will install the tanks, and even more importantly, where you will lay all the piping. I've visited many fish farms all over the world, and I've seen situations when the pipes were laid just underfoot. Frankly speaking, it's not convenient. It's not convenient when you wash the floors, perform any operations with the fish and maintain the system. You will always stumble over those pipes. What's the point of doing that if you can do it right in advance? Thus, either you embed the pipes into the concrete, or you make a single podium and lay all the pipes and they will not be an obstacle in anyone's way. And now let's consider the last topic, which also applies to fish holding tanks. How do you handle fish inside the fish holding tanks in general? What needs to be thought out beforehand in order to make handling fish easy and enjoyable? The first issue I would like to focus on is fish catching and sorting. If your farm is small, of course, you can do everything literally manually. Thus, you can catch fish with a net, replace it into some container, transport it, sort it, get it, do everything else that is required, all in manual mode. And it's relatively low capacity farms that works wonderful. But if your farm is not small scale, but rather large scale one, that's where problems arise. Imagine, your farm 500 tons of grow out fish per year, and you have to somehow fish those 500 tons out of the tanks. 
That's first. And secondly, you have to sort that fish. And I have encountered situations when these had not been thought out in advance. In fact, it's real hell, because it's a huge amount of manual labor. This is why we recommend that this is taken care of in advance. So let's start with fish transferring and sorting. Let me say straight away that you should automate all these processes if your farm capacity is 50-100 tons per year. Anything less, rather conventional. You can do it manually. It doesn't always make sense to incur costs. How is it usually done? There has to be a certain point of fish discharge from the tanks. It may be through the same bottom pit, if you make it the right design, or through some other tank point. You discharge the fish. Then channels are provided to move the fish further. After that, at the end of these channels, there is a certain tank, which collects the fish, and then it can be sorted and transferred further. For example, fish pump is connected to this channel. This pump sucks all fish from the collecting tank, transfers it to the sorting machine. Then fish is sorted and transferred either back to tanks or is released for sale. This is a very simple means of automation and moving in certain fish within the fish farm. Once again, I would like to underline that all this is worth as soon as your farm has certain industrial capacity, starting at least from 5100 tons. To be honest, fish transferring in certain system at a small farm will have a small economic impact, but it will cost the same as at a large fish farm. That's why it's always worth weighing up, considering the economics. So, how are fish handling operations are performed? Let's say you have a 50 cubic meters tank. You need to catch fish. What should you do? First of all, you have to relocate and collect it somewhere. Of course, you can do it by means of the old-fashioned way nets, because you won't be able to catch it with a net. You have to transfer and concentrate fish somewhere, preferably not with nets, but with special up-to-date systems. For example, special partitions are installed into round tanks, which concentrate fish within a certain part of a tank. And just in this place, this fish can be selected, caught and transferred further to the sorter in the fish kennel, or just be fished out manually. There is a number of other options for catching fish. For example, by crane beam, by dragging fish out of the tanks, or by catching it some other way. By the way, if you have any interesting options, be sure to write about it in the comments. And now, as I promised, I'm going to tell you about a trick on how to get the required speed of the water inside the tank right. Why is this important? Many customers of mine ask about what's the right thing to do. Fast circulation inside a round tank. Or slow. What to do so that the fish, on the one hand, doesn't get fat, and on the other hand, doesn't lose its biomass. It's simple enough. In order for the fish to grow well, not to get fat, and at the same time not to lose biomass, it's necessary to adjust water circulation speed inside the tanks. If we are talking about a round tank, it's easy to adjust. So try to maintain the speed that would, on the one hand, provide for the tank self-cleaning, on the other hand, would not be too stressful for the fish. As a rule of thumb, it's between 0.5 and 2 body length of the fish. For instance, if you have a fish of 20 cm in length, juvenile fish, you should stick to the speed of the water inside the tank value from 10, but it's undesirable, up to 40 cm per second. I would recommend 30-40 cm per second, so that your tanks are self-cleaned properly, and in fry departments, it can be even less. So let's summarize. In the two last videos, we figured out what material for the tank's production is better to choose, what shape is more appropriate for us, how all the parameters depend on the species of fish, its stage of growth, how to properly provide for water supply to the tanks as well as waste water discharge, is the best option to install the tanks on the floor or on a special podium, well, in general, how to handle and sort out fish. If you liked my video, press the like button and subscribe to my channel. This is Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it. Bye!